This is Jeff Eichner of Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania, United States of America. Listen to the International Radio Report every Sunday morning at 1030 on CKUT 90.3 FM in Montreal. Welcome everyone to the International Radio Report on CKUT 90.3 FM in Montreal. This is our show for Sunday, December the 5th, 2021. My name's Sheldon and I am here with Jill and we thank you for joining us on our weekly 30 minutes of news and information from the world of radio. If you'd like to reach us, our email address is radioreport at yahoo.com. We're live streaming and archived at the CKUT website, ckut.ca. Our Facebook group is International Radio Report. We welcome four new members to it this week, uh, Derek, Jack, Ron, and Fernando. We thank you for joining us, bringing us up to 661 members. You can join the group easily. Uh, go to the page, International Radio Report on Facebook, click join this group, and away you go. We also have our show available to you on YouTube every week. It is uh, youtube.com slash international radio report. You'll find the latest show there as well as archived versions of the show, previous shows. And we have 516 subscribers. You can subscribe to the channel and get uh, notices every time a new program is posted up there. And we're uh, going to be working on a special Christmas edition that will be coming up. It won't air on CK. KUT, but it will be only available through the YouTube channel. Yep. So uh, we want to uh, remind you of that. Keep your eyes open for that coming up uh, sometime between now and Christmas. We are announcing the winners of the 2021 Canadian Radio Awards presented by HD Radio. And this was published in Broadcast Dialogue magazine. Broadcast Dialogue is pleased to announce the winners of the 2021 Canadian Radio Awards presented by HD Radio. We're thrilled to recognize the excellent radio created against a backdrop of remote working, a recovering marketplace, and a slow return to in-person events. Thank you to all of the stations who entered, our sponsors and supporters who made the Howards Awards, is what they're officially called, possible, and our illustrious jury of industry pros who gave careful consideration to each category. Winners were determined by number of votes received with the runner-ups also listed in the most competitive categories. In another challenging year of Canadian radio, you all deserve congratulations for not only staying the course, but finishing the year strong as we look forward to 2022. And as they say in award shows, and the winners are. Now, we're not going to give you the full list of winners. We've only pulled out the major categories. We're going to post a link to the full article if you want to see all of the various categories. Uh, we'll put that on our Facebook page. But um, they break these down in most cases by sizes of the radio market. So you have a large market a category, a medium market category, and a small market category. Those are based on the size of the city and the population that are covered uh, by the radio stations in each of those areas. So they start with station of the year, large market. The winner, 93.7 JR Country, which is a CJJR FM in Vancouver. The runner up, 99.9 .9 Virgin Radio, a CKFM FM in Toronto. In the medium market category, the winner is Shea 106, a CHEZ in Ottawa. The runner up, 104.9 The Wolf, which is CFWF FM in Regina, Saskatchewan. And in the small market category, the winner is 7.30 a.m. CKDM in Dauphin, Manitoba, the, with the runner-up being 97.9 .9 The Bruce, CFPS-FM in Port Elgin, Ontario. They have a category for Campus or Community Station of the Year. Unfortunately, CKUT did not win that this year. Uh, the winner in uh, large market is Jazz FM 91, which is CJRT in Toronto. The medium market winner, CIVL 101.7 FM, Fraser Valley Community Radio in Abbotsford, British Columbia. The runner-up, CFUV. 101.9 FM University of Victoria Student Radio Society in Victoria, British Columbia. And the small market uh, winner, 
Oldies 96 Community Radio CINB in Rothsay, New Brunswick, with the runner-up being 99.3 Country FM CJPE FM in Prince Edward County, Ontario. Now, some of the other categories that are uh, awarded uh, winners are um, Music Director, Program Director, On-Air Host Music Station, On-Air Host News Talk Sports, On-Air Team Music Stations, On-Air Team News Talk and Sports Stations, Anchor, and Reporter. So we'll post a full list of winners on our Facebook page with the link to the article. And uh, we have to throw in a little local note here, a sad note. But unfortunately, as far as I'm concerned, not a very surprising note. A statement on the state of radio in our city, which is Montreal, Quebec, not a single winner in any category from any Montreal-based radio station. So that's a uh, sad state of affair for uh, our Radio City, um, but like uh, you say, I'm not surprised either. I mean, um, I don't see anything, I don't hear anything worthy of winning any awards in pretty much any station, um, you know, except maybe um, like community radio. I, I, I would think CKUT could uh, be in there, but um, for general radio, in gen- I mean, there's nothing interesting in Montreal right now. There needs to be a change. And I was looking at Virgin Radio when I saw the uh, the Toronto Virgin Radio, and I'm like, at first I thought it was like, no, I don't, I don't think that's the Montreal Virgin Radio for sure. <laughs> you know, that makes me wonder though, how different can Virgin Radio in Toronto be than Virgin Radio in Montreal? Because they're Virgin Radio FM stations, music stations all across the country. And from what I've been told, they're basically clones of each other. So how the Toronto one got chosen above any of the other Virgin Radio stations is a little bit surprising. One thing that I think about these stations, like Virgin Radio, honestly is not very different from quite a few other stations that play the exact same music in Montreal, but that are way more popular. And I think it's it has more to do with people stick to one station, and for some reason, everybody goes to the same one, and that's the one they listen to, even though the station you know, and the other next frequency is the same programming, the same type of music. It's as if there's just, you know, everybody's going in the same place. And um, with the same type of music, if you're not making it, it's, I don't know, it's nobody cares about tuning your frequency. I don't know. It doesn't seem to be personality driven nope. either, because there seems to be this trend of getting away from personality driven radio. So, you know, it's not necessarily that you like that announcer better than no. this announcer, even though you're playing the same music. So I'm, I'm really not sure. It's, it's, it's very confusing. Uh, you know, I think we should give credit though, to, uh, like you said, some of the Montreal stations, the, the, the secondary stations, the campus related stations, uh, both in English and French, uh, community stations, uh, the one in Longay on the South shore comes to mind, yeah. uh, you know, which really focuses on, on a smaller audience, on a smaller community in respect respect to, uh, you know, just broad appeal. Uh, but uh, yeah, the rest of it, I mean, particularly in music stations, I mean, it's, you know, there's, it's music and and, yeah. and that's basically it. Uh, so yeah, it's, it is kind of curious though, that you mentioned that, uh, that one Virgin radio station standing out and, and winning, uh, you know, a runner up in the station of the year so something's going on in toronto or everybody at the station's got their mother and their grandmother and their <laughs> father and sister and and every friend that they've paid to vote for them or something i i don't know it just seems a little strange but anyways we're we're a little skeptic <laughs> that's yeah. all i could say so. there's a new dx program or a radio related program on the air uh coming out of wrmi and uh, this is via Yimber Gavaria. It's a new program called CQ Calling, beginning December 2nd, so it started already. Uh, WRMI is pleased to broadcast a weekly DX program specially oriented towards the large number of amateur radio operators in the audience. The name is CQ Calling, 
It's produced and presented by Larry Dayo, uh, who says, I've been an avid medium wave and shortwave DXer since 1972. I began in broadcasting in 1977 in Portland, Oregon, a total of 11 years in commercial radio. I host a nearly daily YouTube show between 20 and 21 UTC called Ham Radio Live. Ham Radio Live is a live show watched daily by people from around the world. The show encourages people to get their ham license while also celebrating shortwave, DX, CB, and radio history. The live viewers are a key element to every show. So the CQ Calling is going to be aired on, if you're in North America, it's Thursday. The times and frequencies are 0815 UTC, 7730 kilohertz to Waihi, South Pacific, Australia, New Zealand. Thursday also at 2015 UTC on 15770 kilohertz to Europe, North Africa, and Middle East. At 0.30 UTC, that's technically UT Friday, but it's Thursday evening, North America, uh, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. 9.395 kilohertz to North America. And at 0.115 UTC Friday, that's 8.15 p.m. Thursday evening, Eastern Time. 9.955 kilohertz to Caribbean, Central, South America. And the 8.15 p.m. Eastern Time broadcast is also simulcast on the WRMI.net uh, internet stream. So I listened to the uh, first show, which aired on Thursday. First surprise was how short it is, 15 minutes. The uh, show was clearly intended mostly at amateur radio. On his first show, he talked about the uh, Dayton Hamvention. And then he actually answered amateur radio questions uh, from viewers. It, um, it, you know, it, it's interesting. It's short, but uh, at least it, it's informative. And he answers questions and reminds me of my own shows that I have, where I answer a lot of questions from, uh, from people. And um, the only little moment where I kind of uh, cringed a little bit was when he talked about uh, that he knew Harney Corso at Radio Havana, Cuba, and I could just, like, I had a smile, because, like, was it? it's Arnie Coro. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, um, it's interesting, and it's fun to have something new, and um, hopefully, um, maybe, you know, someday it could extend even more than 15 minutes for now. I don't know if it's just for a trial run and see how many people are listening in. And a uh, quick little tip here, if you listen to the one at 2015 UTC, well, you get a bonus after it ends at 2030, it's the AWR WaveScan DX show. So you get a full 45 minutes of radio programming. Yeah, 15 minutes is a short period of time. I mean, we know how fast our half hour goes every week. So 15 minutes um, doesn't leave a lot of time to nope. get a lot of information in. But, um, you know, they, they do have to pay for airtime in most cases on WRMI. Yeah. So um, I don't know what it's going to cost uh, him to, to run this show each week. But uh, at least, he's, as you say, at least he's giving it a try. Um, he mentions, you know, uh, with the YouTube channel uh, having shortwave and DXing and CB and what have you. But in 15 minutes... Um, it sounds at least like for the first one, like you said, that it's going to focus a lot on amateur radio. And yeah. the reason that WRMI is saying they're broadcasting it is because they claim to have a large number of amateur radio operators in their audience. Yep. So um, I guess it's catering more to that uh, to that element. Yeah, but, uh, you know, something to uh, look forward. And uh, I'm going to continue listening. And uh, always cool, even if it's 15 minutes, it's always cool to have some dedicated radio show on the air. And we have one other uh, ham radio related story here um, before we uh, get to our solar weather. Uh, the headline is Learn CW or Morse code online. And it comes from John Brace uh, through your um, official SWL channel on YouTube. Uh, John says uh, there is some talk on the live stream about learning Morse code. And I guess you've had a lot of discussions with people about that. Some some kind of heated discussions, I know, in the last few weeks oh, about yeah. uh, rules and regulations and uh, requirements to get a license. Well, here is a link to a site that, uh, that John found very useful for learning and practicing code. It's called LCWO, 
learn Morse code online. At LCWO, you can learn Morse telegraphy, or CW, online in your browser. You don't need to install a program on your computer, and you always have your personal settings available from any computer on the globe with an internet connection. You can also easily track your progress by means of different statistical functions. Sign up for a free account or use uh, the username test password test to play around and start learning or improving your CW today. The site features the uh, Coke Method CW course, high scores, compare your results with others, speed practice, code groups, plain text training, call sign training, and word training, MP3 practice files, which you can download, convert text to CW, uh, that does not even require a login, forum for user discussions and feedback, uh, user groups, uh, WAE QTC training, and more to come soon. The website, just go to lcwo.net to check it out. So you can use this to start with CW, yep. or if you just want to practice and build up your speed or what have you, uh, work on different aspects of your CW, you can do it through the site. So again, it's lcwo.net. I went to, to check it out and uh, looked at some of the samples and uh, even downloaded some MP3. It's, it's well done and uh, looks interesting. You can even, you know, if you don't want to log in, you can download those MP3 files and download the text file that goes with it. You can compare your results with the text file. Um, I think it's a neat way to learn Morse code. We all know it's like learning a second language. So, um, you know, I think uh, the, the, the way it's done and the way that you can also compare yourself with others is uh, probably going to help some people actually improve even on their Morse code already. So what's happening with our son? Well, it's rather quiet. We had another quiet week with, um, you know, some solar winds sometimes uh, giving us uh, unsettled conditions uh, from time to time, but nothing major happened uh, during the week. We did have uh, one um, kind of a brush with a coronal mass ejection that went to unsettled conditions, but no, you know, storming of any kind. Uh, varying conditions on the bands. Uh, some days were good, some days were not as good as others. Uh, Probably has to do with you know some of those changes. We know how solar activity can change quickly, so uh, conditions on the bands also follow that. There is a solar wind flowing from a equatorial coronal hole that could reach the Earth um, on uh, December the fifth. And apart from that, we have two sunspot groups as we are recording, and uh, the solar flux hovering around the 80, upper 80s to lower 90s uh, in general. So conditions, varying conditions, but interesting conditions, but quiet uh, at the same time on the sun right now. So the best way to really know uh, how conditions are is, of course, to turn on your radio. This is Tony Straka from Lansdale, Pennsylvania. The International Radio Report presents 30 minutes of news, information, and commentary on developments in the world of radio every Sunday morning at 10.30 on CKUT 90.3 FM in Montreal and online at ckut.ca. We're coming towards uh, Christmas and uh, lots of interesting things relating to the holidays that come up on radio. And uh, you've got one through your uh, official SWL net uh, about an interesting net that people can tune into. Yeah, the Santa net. This is via Kent Johnson. And, uh, well, uh, it says, Share the magic of ham radio and Santa Claus with your children, grandchildren, and neighborhood kids. The Santa net is held every evening between Thanksgiving and Christmas on 3916 kilohertz lower sideband at 7.15 p.m. Central Time. That is 0115 UTC. And uh, it's fun to listen to, actually. So um, if you want to uh, hear Santa and uh, even hear uh, kids that uh, might ask for their favorite toys for Christmas, um, it's, a, I think, a fun way to bring kids into the amateur radio and radio hobby in general. And uh, who knows, maybe uh, some of them will become ham radio operators or at least listeners when they grow up. 
It's amazing how propagation always seems to open up to the North Pole around Christmas time. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. I'd like to see the antenna set up up there at the uh, the North Pole as well. Must be uh, must be pretty special with the uh, northern lights going in the background and the whole works. Uh, but somehow those signals get through every night, 7.15 p.m. Central Time, 0115 UTC, 3916 kilohertz lower sideband. I wonder if um, he gets the help of the reindeer to put the antennas up. <laughs> yeah, they can walk out those beverages across the ice and whatever. Uh, string them up between their antlers. And the whole works, yeah. Anyways, lots of fun. All right. Um, we wanted to talk a little bit about medium wave DXing today yeah. because we're coming into what I always say is the peak season for medium wave DXing. For for new people that are listening to us, maybe don't quite understand some of our terminology. We're talking about the regular AM broadcast band on your radio. You don't need any fancy radio, no shortwave, whatever. Just find whatever little AM radio you've got and start tuning around. Don't mm. leave it locked on one station all the time. Just start tuning that dial or pressing the buttons and, and see what you're going to be able to hear on other channels. And if you're doing that, whether you know it or not, you are DXing. <laughs> so um, as we get to the shortest days of the year now meaning the least amount of light you know from yep. sunrise to sunset i mean we're starting to see it here in montreal by 3 30 4 o'clock in the afternoon it's starting to get dark that's the key to medium wave dxing when it starts yep. to get dark then stations start coming in that you wouldn't normally be hearing during the daytime during daylight hours so because we've got such a short period of daylight you can start tuning around on your radio, on your AM band, uh, 3.30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and you'll start hearing stations on those frequencies in between your local stations. Now, we don't have too many AM stations here in Montreal, but you might live in a big city that's got a lot of them on the band. Mm. But tune in between those stations and see what you can hear. I know here in Montreal, I noticed it this week. I think it was uh, earlier, maybe Monday or Tuesday, I turned the radio on around quarter to four in the afternoon. I was already hearing WCBS yeah. 880 out of New York City, WBZ out of Boston on 1030 kilohertz, Hartford, Connecticut on 1080, the Bloomberg radio station in New York on 1130. Now, most of those stations are big powerhouse stations, most of them using 50 kilowatts of power. But as soon as that darkness starts to fall, those signals start reflecting off the ionosphere and go over great long distances. You don't find this stuff happening as much in the summer. A lot of static, electricity in the air, thunderstorms, lightning, that sort of thing. But now it's generally quiet, long darkness paths, and that's the key to uh, medium wave DXing. What's nice about uh, a DXing of the medium wave or the AM band, as a lot of people call it, is also the fact that your radios probably already have a great antenna. Most portables... Most radios have internal ferrites that are surprisingly good at receiving signals. And don't forget that on uh, medium wave or on AM uh, radio, the uh, radios um, is very directional. So just turning that radio in different directions will actually change. You can sometimes, uh, you know, what we call null a station or uh, just by turning the radio in one direction, you can actually have one station fade out and maybe you can hear something else that is also on the same frequency because that's also the challenge. Sometimes multiple stations coming in at the same time and trying to identify each one is part of the fun. And uh, using online streaming is kind of useful also when you try to find you know, what station it could be. Uh, Wikipedia is pretty good with the, the list of AM stations also when you want to know what is on the frequency, what's possible. And then you can just try some streams online and try to focus. It's, it's a little hard sometimes because the streams might be like 15, 20 seconds delay. Yeah. It doesn't make it easy all the time, but at least try to compare. Is it the same program? Could it be the station I'm hearing or not? Uh, but it's a challenge and it's a lot of fun. And, you know, all that is required for a lot of it is just your radio and its internal ferrite will be good enough for a lot of the DXing you can do. I'm glad you mentioned Wikipedia because um, what I often do, if you type in 
880-AM in your Wikipedia yep. search. It'll bring up a page and it'll show you the radio stations that are on that uh, frequency. You can e click on each of them. In many cases, it takes you to the station website. Yep. And there, it will also sometimes lead you to this live streaming of the station as well. So you can actually hear what the station sounds like, compare it with what you're hearing on your radio. Look for stations that are going to be reasonably close to where you are. Like, look for stations that are, you know, maybe within... Uh, 500 kilometers to a thousand kilometers from your location yep. and chances are you know you might hear some of those stations you need to look at how powerful the stations are as well we mentioned those 50 kilowatt stations but there are lots of other much lower powered stations um, there are frequencies where you can sometimes on a good night you might be able to pull out three or four or five different stations on one frequency simply by what you said turning the radio and not just turning it one way like you know front to back but even stand it up on its edge sometimes and oh, yeah. twist it around it really uh, these antenna signals or uh, radio signals are very directional and they come from different directions so by by twisting your radio around uh, you can hear some interesting things one last thing we want to mention too is if you get really deep into this we're also coming into the season here on the east coast uh, for listeners anywhere on the East Coast, the closer you are to the coastline as well, there's the possibility of not only hearing North American medium wave stations, but hearing transatlantic stations, yep. Caribbean stations, Central South American stations, Cuba, Mexico sometimes. Um, it's really quite amazing what's out there. If you're in a nice quiet location, if you're more towards the coast and you have that clear path of water, salt water across in front of you, uh, there are stations broadcasting with like two megawatts of power. Oh, yeah, on some are amazing. Wave. So uh, sometimes you might get really lucky. And, you know, that's getting a little more complicated into DXing. Uh, but uh, start out very casually. Small radio, see what you can hear on any given night. I think you'd be quite surprised. You can be a DXer just yes, like us. <laughs> absolutely. So we have upcoming ham radio contests. Yep, um, we have four this week. Uh, we'll run through these quickly. Uh, the first one coming up is the ARRL 10 meter band contest. 0 hundred December 11th to 2359 Zulu December the 12th, sponsored by the ARRL. The objective for amateurs worldwide to exchange contacts or QSO information with as many stations as possible on the 10 meter band. So that is a 28 megahertz band. Uh, which is 10 meters. It's both phone and CW, so voice or Morse code can be used, but you can only contact stations once per mode. We have the TRC DG contest, 06 is Zulu, December 11 to 18 Zulu, December 12th, sponsored by the Thracian Rose Club, Kazanlak, Bulgaria. And the bands 160, 80, 40, 20, 15, and 10 meters. All participants must observe IARU band planned and the mode RTTY. We have the SKCC December Weekend Sprintathon, 1200 Zulu, December 11th to 2359 Zulu, December the 12th, sponsored by the Straight Key Century Club. The bands are 160 through 6 meters, excluding the work bands and the mode is CW. And interesting in this one, um, there will be special December weekend sprint-a-thon reindeer stations and Santa's elves stations, which when contacted will earn participants special points in the contest. And there's the QRP ARCI Holiday Spirits Homebrew Sprint, 20 Zulu to 23 Zulu, December 12th, sponsored by the QRP Amateur Radio Club International. Band 160 through 10 meters, the mode CW only, and QRP, which is low power only. So we are out of time. Yes, we are. 30 minutes going by quickly as usual. We thank you for tuning in uh, this week and hopefully every week. And uh, drop us a note at radioreport at yahoo.com if you have any questions or comments. And do check out our Facebook group and our YouTube channel. Uh, lots of great information there as well for you. We will talk to you again next uh, Sunday with our next edition of the International Radio Report at CKUT 90.3 FM. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye.